It's bad. Okay. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey. <laughs> Welcome back. Today, we are working on strength. And we have a really important to talk about topic to talk about in our How It's Done 101. <laughs> totally but screwed that one up. <laughs> so today we're talking about muscle atrophy. So it's an actual condition, but it's also something that happens as we age. And basically, it's when your muscles start to waste away. I know that doesn't sound fun. Ooh, it doesn't, sound, it doesn't yeah. sound good at all, but it's something that, you know what, we can combat. It's something that does happen to everyone. And there's tons of factors that can attribute it to, to it. One being lack of mobility. Mm, makes sense. So guess what, we can help you with that. It makes sense, it totally makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not moving your muscle, there's no blood flow, there's no stimulation, there's definitely no growth, and eventually it'll start to shrink, right? Um, also, another factor that can contribute to it, lack of activity, which is almost the same as lack of mobility. Lack of mobility, more specifically, is not moving in certain different, different areas. Lack of acti activity more refers to your, um, your workouts, your fitness, yeah. like actually getting up and moving properly. So you okay. could start to atrophy more in the places that you're not Exactly, stimulated. yes. So there's a difference between mobility and lack of activity. Mobility means you're simply not moving. So for instance, if you suffered an injury and you're laying in bed and you cannot move anything, that is lack of mobility. Whereas lack of activity is you're walking around every day, but you're actually not strength training or focusing on growing or dynamic activity. Exactly, maybe. exactly. Another factor, unfortunately, we're all privy to this one, is aging. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, not so fun fact, after the age of 30, we all start to lose muscle at a rate of 3 to 5%. A year? A year, wow. right? Which is a shit ton. That's a lot of muscle. It takes a long time to make this muscle and to think that we're just losing it because we're not moving is really shitty. Another not so fun fact, men over their lifetime will lose up to 30% of their muscle. Sorry boys. <laughs> As you shrivel down to the ground and die. Okay. Here's another thing that I'm not sure that we are aware of, because truthfully, it's not common knowledge. Alcohol. Alcohol consumption over a long period of time adds to muscle atrophy, right? That makes sense, sense. right? It like totally if makes sense. always hungover and you're just laying in bed and not moving. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you mean, right? <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> not exactly. Night, and then I ate so hard. much, so <laughs> it's, <camp. laughs> it's more of the fact that the alcohol, the stimulus in the alcohol temporarily weakens your muscles, right? So excessive drinking over a long period of time can attribute to it. I'm not saying you can't have a cocktail. I'm just saying, like, you need to have a balance in life. Do it while on the treadmill. No, don't do it while you're on the treadmill. That's really dangerous. That's really dangerous. Okay, okay. And malnutrition. Obviously, if you're not feeding your muscles well, they'll start to go cannibalistic and eat each other to survive. <laughs> to survive. <laughs> you, it's all terrible. I know there's no good news. Why do you have to do this to us? There's no good news. There's no good news. But, okay, so we can combat these things. We've already like determined that we can combat it with exercise. Right, an easy fix, not a fix, but a, a way to slow that three to 5% per year is to exercise. Get up and get moving. So if you check, are, check. check, check. If your muscle atrophies as a result of a big injury, then obviously that's a little bit more serious. It's something you need to discuss with your doctor. If it's the result of a soft tissue, blah, 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 soft tissue injury, then that can be helped with physio. So if you can't move a certain area of your body because you have a soft tissue injury and you need to remobilize in order to start regaining muscle strength, this is a familiar concept when we hurt ourselves. We go to physio, we start to mobilize, regain strength before we come back to the gym. Your physiotherapist can help. Next, and definitely a really important one, and one that should be on your radar in any, in any case, is dietary changes. If you have a diet that is not helping you grow muscle, it'll do the opposite. If you're not helping, you're taking away from it, okay? So if you're not giving your body good, complex carbs to help propel you through workouts, if you're not giving your body nice, clean sources of protein, 
even if you're here with us every day working, your muscles will start to cease because it needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. It needs food for life. Anyways, that's how it's done. Get rid of that topic. Yeah, she doesn't like it, <laughs> but it's important. Food for thought, okay? So good food, lots of movement, lots of mobility, and watch how much you drink. That's how it's done. Much <laughs> Maybe like at a two percent rate. Okay, we ready? One. one. Oh, one. I you didn't like that one, did you? I know it's, it's all bad news there. Okay, so today we are strength training. Perfect segue. We're going to get back some of those muscles that we've lost over the year, the three to five percent. Okay, and for, that, that's just the average. It doesn't mean we actually did it. Strength training, 35 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. We have a whole lot of equipment today. Jesse and I have our vests on. We're also working with our stability ball, a very versatile and pretty pink thing our core bands, and we've each got some dumbbells out, okay? So we are going to work you. Yes, don't be afraid to have a couple sets of dumbbells just in case you want to um, switch it up, go lighter, yeah. heavier. And if you want to keep your vest on for the entire time, go for it. If you're not sure, put it on, and when you need to take it off, then take it off. It's easier to remove it than say, shit, I wish I put it on for that workout. Okay, we're gonna get right into our warm up. So we're moving now, let's go. Nice big deep squat with a cross body punch. Okay, so you've seen these warm up exercises before. We're mobilizing through the hip, trying to bring movement to all different planes. Warming up those shoulders, warming up back of our body, the front of our body. And we're going for another nine seconds. Five, three. Two and one. Okay, we're gonna take a nice big step forward with that right foot and rotate over that forward bent knee. Always remembering to keep your gaze in line with your spine. So if you look over that shoulder, let your eyes follow, okay? That's where the energy goes. The energy goes, the energy flows where your eyes go. Five more seconds here. This is a warm up. Okay, and then we're gonna reach over to the right. Nice big step as we open up through the rib cage. Working on that lateral game. You'll start to notice as we move on and you learn a little bit more through our 101s why we do the things we do. Why our warm ups aren't all in one direction. Yeah. Why we warm up certain areas. Three, two, and one. All right, so we're gonna come down to the ground. For those wide mountain climbers, taking your hands up to the outside of your hands. Remember, you wanna keep your gaze down. Core is nice and tight here. What are we got for time? 10 more seconds. That's a long, <laughs> that feels like a long one, doesn't it? Get that heart rate right up. Two and one. Get that blood flowing. Oh, it's flowing. It's flowing. So we're coming down for the pike to heel tap. So walking your hands out, really planting your hands through the ground as we slide one hand back to tap the opposite toe. Really feeling that stretch through the back of the legs. That's the best part. Uh, stretch. So try and reach back on your foot. Oh yeah, it's the, it's the saltiest part. I love it. Okay, up on your feet. Saltiest. Saltiest. I like salt, so it's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so we've got those alternating lateral lunges. Waking up the adductors and adductors, which are the muscles on the inside and outside of your thighs responsible for pulling your leg back towards your body and sending it away laterally. Quite important. Three seconds. Two and one. High knees. So this is probably the fastest that you'll be moving all day. Tempo tends to go down on strength days. But I want you to enjoy this little rush of blood. Push that ground away. You got it, Jess? Got it. Run in just as fast as we can. <laughs> so 
song. It's totally the theme song. Okay, back down. Nice big arm circles. Feeling yesterday's workout. Yes. Shoulders. And the day before. Okay, mobilizing through those shoulders. Let's switch directions. Take it behind. For me, it's a little bit stickier to reverse it. Yeah. So I'm aware of that. I'm doing... It's, your chest is tight. It's so tight. Tighter than the back. Boom, okay. All right, what are we starting with? We're starting with our good mornings. Nice. So let's reach for our pink things. Pink things, I'm gonna use weight. We're gonna use weight. You do you, boo-boo. So if you're using pink things, you can step your feet into it. Take that band behind your head. If you're using weight like Jesse, you can take it onto your shoulders. What you wanna be aware of here is that the movement comes from the hips. I want you to think of someone being behind you, pulling those hips all the way to the back wall. And we'll feel that full extension of the hamstring and the glute behind the body. I missed that set entirely. All right, so we're doing sets and reps here, guys. We're not doing laps. So we have three. Strengthen. Three of those. I'm gonna switch to the pink thing. Okay, we're back on in three, two, and one. So I'm sending my glutes all the way to that back wall, keeping my core tight, driving through the heels. <laughs> so come on up. Really push down on your entire foot to keep that pink thingy stable. And here at the bottom of the movement, I'll feel my hamstrings extend and my glutes flare. Keep your gaze down, tuck that chin in. I caught you. And we should never feel this in our lower back. There's just a small amount of work in those spinal erectors, but primarily it should be glutes and hamstrings. This is a good weight, guys. So if you can't do this way, you can always load a bar. You can load weights. You can do it with a different type of band. You can use a band on your feet and then grab it with your hands. Three, so two, many options. Less work. It's obviously gonna make a difference depending on your height as well. Oh yeah, and if you're a glutton for punishment, you can even walk your feet up the pink thing totally to make up. it harder. I love these. And good morning. So understated, such a great movement. And we're working on our hinge. Core is tight, back is flat. We got five more seconds here. Three, two, and one. Okay, be careful when you get out of this. You don't want to smack yourself in the face unless you're into that kind of thing. Okay, we're back on in eight seconds. Roll your shoulders back. <laughs> we're working on our pink thingy pull apart. So I'm going to get my hands really close. Just one spare run in between. Shoulders are back. Again, I'm hinging at the hips. And then I'm taking my arms wide out to the side. Okay, Jesse's demonstrating more in a standing position. But if you feel like you're not loading your back at all, you can definitely hinge to change how much that rear delt is activated. You'll notice my pinky fingers are leading as I take my arms up, and there's only a micro bend through the elbows. Three, two, last one. Ooh. Well done. This feels so good. That's good. Yeah. So off the control on the way out and the way in. Eccentric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like the other word. The other word. Concentric? Concentric. Sorry. Three, two, let's work. So it's a really good point. This pink thingy, we're pulling it apart. It's gonna fight us. It wants to come back to its natural form. So on the way down, resist. Okay? Think of counting down for three. Two, one, keep that tension in the band. Don't let it go loosey-goosey before we take those arms back up. Okay, so that point in which the band starts to lose its tension, we send the arms back up. Breathe, we got three, two, and one. Oh yeah. Oh, good. Feels so good, so good. So remember guys, this is the last set. In the last two or three reps, it's strength day, you should be feeling like like it's almost impossible, okay? If not, you need to rung up or wait up. Should be like, what the hell is wrong with these two? Okay, I'm gonna stand for this last one. Shoulders back. Remember, we wanna keep them retracted. Ideally, we want the scapula, the shoulder blades nice and flat on the back of your body. And we're trying not to pop through the rib cage here. 
Your legs are active even though we're not working on them. Think of pulling up on those thighs like if we're trying to pull high socks up. Reach through the fingertips and still, pinky fingers, lead. We've got six seconds here. Shoulders down and back. Three, one. two, and one. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Feels so good. Are you using weights or pink thing? Well, you can use either. Why don't you show them weights and I'll show them with the pink thing. Single leg deadlift. We're gonna start on the right side first. So right foot down or? Right foot, foot planted. planted. So if you're using that pink thing and your right foot's planted, we're gonna hold the rungs and we're tipping out the hips to send that left leg back. Quick tip here, if you keep the moving leg, ankle of the moving leg flexed and pointing down to the ground, it helps keep your hips square. Again, we want that chin tucked in so that your neck is nice and long in the front and the back. And if this isn't working for you at all, if you can't find the balance, plant your opposite foot. We're on the tippy toes, but still focusing on that right leg, okay? So let's switch over to the other side. Challenger bar too. Yeah. Stability. Nice call. Oh, she's not just cute. <laughs> okay, for four seconds. Three, two, and one. Hinge, 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 hinge. Tuck that chin in. So your ankle stabilizers, knee stabilizers, they're kicking in here. You'll see that starts to shake a little bit. And that's normal especially if you, you have prior injury in those areas. Reach, 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 and back up. You really wanna feel the pull in that glute on the way back up. Yeah, I want you to think that the only reason your body's coming back up to standing is because that glute is shortening. Okay, we're gonna split it up, half and half. Or you can just do double leg deadlift here. I'm gonna split it up. Okay, we're back on in six seconds. Three, two, one, let's work. Ah! Totally see the imbalances when we start to do things unilaterally. When she says unilaterally, she means isolated. So on one side, training one side at a time, switching sides. So slick. So slick. What's so slick? How I just came in and out of my pink thing. <sighs> Tuck that chin in. Practice. Core is tight. Ooh. One more for fun. <laughs> I'm taking it down. That was three. Yeah, no, I just did one more rep for fun. These are my favorite, like actually. So okay. Alternate, yeah? One side yeah. and the other. So we're starting in a nice deep squat. We're gonna need to keep that dumbbell close to the body. When it gets to about chest level, flick it overhead like we're trying to toss it through the roof. Okay, down, hand up. I'm gonna stay on the right side for the entire time. You can alternate like Jesse is if you'd like. Be sure to hinge at the hips before coming down. And lots of upward momentum as we keep that dumbbell close to your chest. Think of shaving your chest. <laughs> no hitting yourself in the face. Do not hit yourself in the face. Five seconds. Three, two, and one. Okay. So when you're coming flicking for that snatch part, I want you to think about rotating, rotating your elbow around. We don't want all the strain on the wrist. We don't want to move the weight just with the wrist. But we're we flicking it through the wrist. Less through work. the wrist, but also rounding with your elbow. A flick of the wrist. Is there a song about that? I feel like there's a song about that. Just a flick of the wrist. There's a song about everything, no? I think so. There should be. Cardi, get on that. Flick of the wrist. Oh, What's it referring to? I don't know. Just a... It could be like... It's a flick of the wrist. It doesn't need to refer to anything. Brushing your shoulders off with a flick of the wrist. <laughs> One more. All right. So if you kept it on one side, like I did, unilaterally, we can alternate for this last rep. Did you find one side weaker than the other? I did not. No. I did not. These are actually one of my favorite things side. to do. So I tend to do a lot of them. Let's go. And we're gonna exhale as we send that up. I feel like this is my superhero moment. When that weight is up in the air, 
you have like an event that makes you nervous, you do your superhero stance. I've never heard that. Oh my god. Is that for you? Yeah, it works. Have you you've never done it? No. Let's practice our superhero stance. Makes you feel powerful. Hands on the hips, chest erect. There you go. That's right. Can do anything. Yeah, so let's see each of your That's mine. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So we're gonna grab that dumbbell. Get it nice and close to the chest, elbows close, and then we're taking it just right around the head, around the world. Now the tendency here, I'm gonna show you an error, is to pop through the chest. We're not trying to do that. The only thing moving is that shoulder bone in the shoulder socket, okay? Mobilizing through your upper middle back. So you guys can see why I said have a few Different sizes of weights around. And rest. Even a kettlebell might work for the deadlifts. So many options. Or if you have a plate at home, that works well. Plate, also. Yeah. I love working with plates. Actually. I love working with plates. Yeah. It has built-in handles. <laughs> Two and one. Here we go. It can be hard on the wrist, so you have to know how to hold the plate. And it's also about choosing the right weight. Oh, another how it's done topic. Coming we did. at you. Sean and I did it in December. You did? Dead. I was sleeping that day, was I? No. Well, this is January. Maybe it's some of our friends here haven't seen that. True. And we should talk about it again. I think it's an important skill. Because I think we shy away from weight sometimes. When really, it's our best friend. It's like yeah, for sure. a commodity. It's like gold. It's like gold in these here parts. Remember, did you get your gold Peloton shoes for Christmas? No! Oh, I thought Santa could make anything. Well, it's COVID, so. <laughs> Two and one. Shop has limited hours. Maybe I can like gold. sub out gold Peloton shoes for like silver Louboutin shoes or something with spikes. Somebody out there listening. <laughs> so, no, don't tell them your ideas. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm starting to feel oh, it. Oh, I feel it. I felt it on two. I felt yeah. it on two, yes. My shoulders are not Five seconds. my favorite part of my body to work. Yeah, two and one. Woo. I do it because I know I need it. Okay. Plank to shoulder tap. Speaking of the devil. Okay, so we are coming down to the ground. Speaking of the devil, we're gonna have time under tension here. So if you need to take your vest off for this one, go for it, okay? Hands below the shoulders, tuck that pubic bone under, small anterior tilt, and then we're just transferring our weight. Really focus on the transfer. Push down through the planted hand before that opposite hand leaves the ground to help minimize that sway in your lower back. It helps engage your core, and if you still feel like you're flip-flopping from side to side and you need to widen your stance, go for it. Increasing that base of support Five seconds, makes guys. it a little bit easier. Three, two, and one. Of course, if you guys need to do this from your knees, then feel free to do so. Just make sure you keep that posture right. And the hips are fully extended. Imagine that you're balancing something on that lower lumbar. Okay. Three. A lot of the time we go up to our knees, the, the hips are up. I want to keep that down. So we're balancing something, something important. Not too much alcohol. We're not going to say alcohol since it starts to atrophy our muscles, but maybe dinner. Maybe our dinner bites on that lower back. What's your favorite meal? Oh, a uh, steak. Really? Anything with steak. How do you have it? Medium rare. Medium rare. Or Chicago. Or Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> so, if I had to pick something to eat forever on a desert island, yeah. probably be steak. Even though I don't know how they'd get steak on a desert island, but is there a desert island? Or just islands, deserted Dirt islands. islands. <laughs> dirted, dirted, dirted. Desert, island. desert, desert islands. Island. Anyways. If you were deserted on an island, if you would that's, have steak. Yeah. I would have steak. Right. I would have steak. Or, or fish, I love. Ooh, Chilean that sea bass. Chile, I switched. Really like Can I change my vote? Okay, I got nods. Chilean sea bass. Chilean sea bass. Chilean specifically? 
That might be a problem, depending on where you're deserted. Maybe we can just like, hey, sea bass. It's so buttery. I love it. What's your favorite? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, depends. There's this potato salad that I absolutely love. I'm like a big potato. <laughs> potato. I don't, I don't eat meat. I love tacos. I love tacos. I like tacos, cauliflower tacos, super potato tacos. I've never had a super potato tacos. I've had lots of fish tacos. Like a shit ton of sh a shit, shit, shit ton. Okay, I'm shit. Cold. I go. Oh no. Oh no, pink thingy extension. Okay, reach for your pink thingy. You got me talking about food. Okay, so we're gonna step your foot into the pink thingy. And then we're gonna loop that pink thingy around back. Walk your hands down, depending on how much resistance you want, and set that core. Your elbows are almost ear muffing your ears, and then we're fully extending. I want you to think about keeping those wrists neutral at the top of that movement. So that basically means we're not bending our wrist because it'll start to go into your forearm. So keep your wrist nice and straight to help isolate the movement to those triceps, okay? And remember, back here. And you guys, as you're loading this, you might need to flare to kind of get the mobility to get it above your head. Then tighten After up. After that, I want you to cinch it, stand nice and tall. Tighten sure it. really get the story to spine. So we are lifting our hands overhead. What tends to happen here is we start to hike our shoulders up to our ears. We still want to keep those shoulders down and back. We don't want it to be trap dominant movement. We want to make sure that we're really using the triceps to bend and extend the elbow. Okay, or bend and extend the pink thingy. We've got eight seconds left here. Work it. Four, three, two, and one. All right, feels so good. No if I this like isn't the band, I like that it's like smooth. I like. I know there's no like. And yeah, I like it as well. The the pull is even. It's an even. Yeah. If you even want more resistance, you can always do single arm. Okay. If you're okay with both arms, or if you walk your hand way down that pink thingy, and you feel the work through your triceps, then you're good where you are. I'm gonna walk it, choke it up a little bit. So you can really get all the way down that pink thingy. Ooh, oh yeah, there we go. Keep it up guys, for 12 seconds. Stay here, as soon as you wanna give up, that's where magic happens, keep it going. So magic is happening right now. Five seconds. <laughs> Keep that core nice and strong. Two, one. one. Woo. Oh, I felt that right. one. The pink thingy Stop. like tried to eat my ponytail. Pike push up. Okay, so this one's gonna require a little bit of coordination. We're gonna start at the back of your ball and walk your body all the way over. We wanna get the tops of your shins onto the ball. There's a couple options here. Hands below the shoulders. We can either pull our knees in towards the ball or we can pike our bum up towards the ceiling. Depending on your mobility, depending on your comfort level, do what works best for you. Remember that we're drawing navel to spine. There's lots of load on your shoulders here. So if you have shoulder injury, you might wanna skip this one and just come down to the ground and reverse to a hamstring curl on the ball. Otherwise, make sure the shoulders are nice and steady in the shoulder socket and they're placed directly under the palms. All right. So you guys, after those triceps extensions, you'll really feel this because you're using some of your triceps to hold yourself up. Are you piking or knee tucking? I knee tucked, but now I'm gonna pike. So we're pivoting at that shoulder joint if you're piking. Palms rooted into the ground, core tight. When you come down, I don't want you to come all the way down here. No hammocking through that lower back. We're just coming to a neutral spine. And back. Woo. Woo. Almost there. Four. I just lost my ball. Last one. Keep a hole on your balls. On your ball. Singular. Okay, we've got one more before we move into our finishers. And our finishers today are really working on some of those muscles that tend to atrophy as we age. So I hope you're ready for it. We're back in two and one. What a way to end. This ain't over. It ain't never over. We are not ending. So if you're doing the pike, 
you'll find that it's a lot slower usually than the knee tuck. You're less stable. It's taking more core work, so that work that you don't see. Just bring that ball up. Hike for as long as you can. And then you can always knee tuck. There's no shame. All right. Well done. Okay, grab some water real quick, towel off, and meet us right back here in T minus 10 seconds for our finisher.